Hello, my name is Shane Saxon, and today I'm going to give you teaching guidelines for a classical composition fable lesson. Classical composition is a program developed by Jim Selby and published by Memoria Press to give students every skill they need to write well. This program is based on an ancient Greek writing tradition that broke down the writing process into discrete stages. Each of these stages distills essential skills necessary for any form of writing that a student will have to do. In the first stage of classical composition, students will learn and practice imitation and variation. Students will study how to retell fables, and by learning how to retell fables, they learn a number of essential writing skills. To teach classical composition fable, you will need three materials. First, you will need the Memoria Press Classical Composition Fable Teacher Guide. Second, the Student Guide. And third, your student will need a piece of scratch paper. The teacher guide will be your best friend when you're teaching a fable lesson. You will notice that in the margin of each lesson, you will see a practical step-by-step -step plan for teaching each fable. We've also included sample answers for each step of the fable that you can use as a guide for evaluating answers, but your students' answers don't have to directly match. The first step when you teach a fable lesson is reading the fable. You'll want to read the fable with your student a few times, taking notes of all the rare and unfamiliar vocabulary. Ask your student who the characters are and what they do. For the student to write about the fable, they need to know it. As a teacher, hopefully you will understand the deeper principle at work here. You will see that in order to write well, you must know what you are trying to say. In the same way, for students to retell their fable well, they must know the fable well. Next, you will identify three plot components of the fable. These three plot components are the recognition, the reversal, and the suffering. A recognition occurs in two ways in a story. First, the recognition is when your student discovers a truth in the fable that they previously didn't recognize. For instance, in the Bible, when you read the story of Joseph, the recognition is realizing that Joseph's suffering was intended by God for good. The second kind is anything the student recognizes in the story. For instance, if a character runs in the story, a student will recognize that because he's run before. In Fable, we primarily focus on this second kind of recognition. The reversal is any time that a character who is mighty is brought low, or a character who is low is made high. Finally, the suffering is anything negative that a character experiences. The suffering usually either leads to the reversal or is a result of the reversal. By learning these three plot components, our students are learning the deep structure of every good story that has ever been told. The second step is practicing variations. The purpose of practicing variations is giving your student facility with language. It is exercising the skill of finding new and inventive ways of expressing something. At first, this is a mechanical process where individual words are substituted with synonyms. But over time, students learn all of the different ways they can change how something is expressed without changing its meanings. The third step is outlining the fable. For students from eight to 10 years old, this is extremely difficult. So at first, you might have to give your students the structure of the outline and help them to fill in the summaries. Eventually, the student will begin to understand how the different levels of the outline relate to each other. And hopefully, before the year is over, they'll also see how the logic of an outline correlates to the inner logic of your fable and be able to outline the story without any help. What's important is making sure that the student understands the shape of the outline. The fourth step is your student to narrate the fable from memory or using the outline that they've just written if they need prompting. This step requires students to prove that they have internalized the fable and gives you an opportunity to assess whether they understand it. Listen to your student retell the fable and point out when they include detail that is unnecessary or leave out parts of the fable that are essential. The best writers are those who learn how to say exactly what they mean, no more and no less. We begin teaching our students how to be that kind of writer right here in the fable stage. In the next two exercises, students will practice paraphrasing the fable. This is the most important part of the fable lesson and where the students should spend the bulk of their time. They will paraphrase the entire fable twice in different ways. In the first paraphrase, students will rewrite the fable in their own words, including all relevant details and amplifying the story with some descriptive details of their own. Invention is what adds life and vibrancy to their writing. The second paraphrase exercise teaches students all of the various ways that a story can be told. Sometimes you'll ask students to reduce the fable to its most basic elements. This forces them to write down only the most essential aspects of the story in a sparse style. Sometimes you'll ask students to invert the order of events in the fable. 
This forces students to tell the fable backwards, which teaches them about the chronology of the story. In order to manipulate a story's chronology, they first have to understand it. At first, you will work very closely with your student as they learn the skill of paraphrasing. But over time, they will learn that there are many, many ways to tell a story. And they'll be able to choose the exact right way for the situation that they are in. After practicing another set of variations, the student's last step of each fable lesson is writing a final draft. The fruit of all their labor to both deeply understand the fable and then explore all the various ways that the fable can be told culminates in a draft of the fable totally unique to them. They should base their draft on one of their paraphrases and you should take time to teach your student how to revise and edit with correct punctuation and capitalization. You will grade this final draft and start all over again the next week. Every lesson of Fable follows the same pattern because Fable teaches essential writing skills that your student will need to master through much practice. When your student has completed the Fable stage of classical composition, he will have gained one of the fundamental skills for a great writer, learning to clearly and eloquently tell stories.